Welcome to Medicine Handy Points. Today the topic is dynamic maneuver effect on cardiac murmurs. So let's discuss that. There are three important dynamic maneuvers. One is Valsalva maneuver which decreases blood flow to the heart. Number second is squatting which increases blood flow to the heart. And then the number third is hand grip, which increases blood pressure. So let's discuss the effect of these maneuvers on different cardiac murmurs. So we will discuss four murmur. Number one is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Number second, mitral valve prolapse. Number third is mitral regurgitation. Number four, aortic stenosis. So in Hookham, actually there is septal hypertrophy which obstruct the aortic outflow. So if there is less blood in the left ventricle, the septal hypertrophy which can be seen in yellow shaded area moves in direction of pink lines and there is more obstruction to the aortic outflow and more murmur. If there is more blood in the left ventricle, the left ventricle the septal hypertrophy moves in direction of green lines and the murmur decreases because of less outflow obstruction. So in Valsalva there is less blood so the murmur will be louder because more obstruction. In squatting there will be more blood in left ventricle so there will be less obstruction and the murmur is softer. In hand grip, the murmur is soft. Explanation is that there is hypertension in hand grip, so the pressure gradient between aorta and left ventricle is lost, so the murmur is soft because the pressure gradient is needed for the louder murmur and there will be no pressure gradient. So now let's discuss mitral valve prolapse. In mitral valve prolapse, the patient has the prolapse during the systole. Now, if the systole occur quickly, prolapse occur early, and then the mitral valve prolapse murmur, murmur will be longer. If systole occur slowly, prolapse occur lately, and the murmur will be shorter. So when there is less blood in the heart, systole occur quickly. So when systole occur quickly, the prolapse occur quickly. When there is more blood in the heart, the systole occurs slowly because it has to work hard and the prolapse occur late. So let's apply that. In Valsalva, there is less blood in the heart, the systole occur quickly, so the murmur occur uh, quickly and prolapse occur quickly and the murmur is longer. In squatting, the, there is increased blood in the heart, the systole occurs slowly, so the prolapse occur late and the murmur is shorter. In hand grip, the murmur is shorter. The explanation is that the pressure in aorta is high, so systole is slow, it is, uh, so as a result, the prolapse uh, occur late and the mitral wire prolapse murmur is then uh, shorter. Now let's discuss this rule. Rule of thumb for left sided murmur. The rule of thumb for left sided murmur is that mitral aortic murmur increases with more blood flow to the heart and decreases with less blood flow to the heart. So this is very important rule. Let's apply it on mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis. So in aortic stenosis what happens in Valsalva maneuver? The murmur is soft because less blood flow to the heart. In squatting, the murmur is louder because of the more flow to the heart. Now in hand grip, the murmur is soft. Explanation again, the pressure gradient is lost as we explained in the previous slides as well. Now let's do the mitral regurgitation. In mitral regurgitation, while silver maneuver, there is less flow to the heart, so murmur is soft. In squatting, there is more flow to the heart, so murmur is louder. In hand grip, the murmur is louder. Explanation is that the high pressure in aorta is reflected back to left ventricle, which exacerbates the mitral regurgitation murmur. So, this was the brief discussion about the dynamic maneuver effect on murmur. I hope you like the video and please subscribe.